Hello and welcome. The Hajj season is here again and consistent with our practice on this program as you answer the call, we shall be taking you through the activities of the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, NACON, and other key stakeholders as they relate to the planning and conduct of the Hajj. In this edition of the program, we focus on the steady progress being made in the airlift of Nigerian pilgrims to Saudi Arabia for the 2019 Hajj. Also in the package, Nigerian pilgrims are full of praise to the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, NACON, just as Islamic scholar discusses when and how the ihram is worn during the Hajj. These and more shortly. Please stay with us. Muhammad Nabi Nabi Masha Allah. We now begin the program with the NACON News Diary and we will be taking reports on how the first set of Nigerian pilgrims are settling down in Medina. Plus, updates on airlift of pilgrims to Saudi Arabia. Here are the reports as presented from our studio. Muhammad, Nabi, Nabi, Nuru, Nabi. The airlift of Nigerian pilgrims to Saudi Arabia for the 2019 Hajj is progressing steadily. 448 pilgrims and officials from Nasara State were among the most recent set of pilgrims to be airlifted from the Namdi Azikwe International Airport, Abuja. The leader of the team, the Emir of Lafia, retired Justice Sidi Bage Mohammed, is the Nasara State Amir Hajj for this year's Hajj. Speaking in an interview before going on board Max Air, which airlifted the pilgrims, the Emir commended the Nasara State pilgrims for their orderly conduct at the airport and called on all Nigerian pilgrims to be good ambassadors of the country while in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. We must show sense of discipline and we must imbibe the culture that our leader, our great leader, Mr. President Muhammadu Buhari, he has set a pace for discipline and orderly behavior in the country. We should give that posture wherever we are, that we, are, we have learned from our leader and we are the best that he has sent out as his ambassadors going for this pilgrim. We are going there to represent Mr. President and uh, we are his eye there. So I think that um, the pilgrim should take advantage of the fact that they are under now a new atmosphere, a new order in the country. And they must try to exhibit that, show that we have a new leader a new sense of direction, a new general atmosphere in the country. Some of the pilgrims spoke on their intentions while promising to pray for the country. Thanks be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that choose me to be among those people that will go and perform this hajj this year. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our ibadah. That's what I will say. I thank God for making me among the pilgrims. I pray for my other Muslims to be part to so that they can visit the holy kaaba insha allah zamu aiki kuma zamu tsare dukkanin abubuwan da muka sani da wanda muka karanta da wanda malamin mu suka sanar da mu zamu kare kuma zamu yi koyi da annabi muhammadu sallallahu alaihi wasallam muhammad nabi nabi nuru Nigeria's coordinator for the 2019 Hajj in Medina, Ahmad Migari, who is also the acting secretary of NACAN, has inspected buses to be used for the transportation of Nigerian pilgrims to various parts of the Holy Land in the course of the Hajj exercise. 
The buses inspected belong to Harfield Transport, the company contracted by Nakon to carry out the assignment of conveying Nigerian pilgrims. The buses have facilities such as toilets, refrigerators and internet services. Harfield Company, we have entered a contract with them for 35,000 pilgrims. They will convey 35,000 pilgrims uh, to, from Medina to Makkah, Makkah, Mashair, Mashair, Jeddah, I mean Makkah, Jeddah. Uh, there is no company that we have entered a contract with. It's only Hafid. But uh, you know that there is a, what we call United Agents, the car syndicate. They will also provide vehicles. Where you have a shot from this side, you know, the other one would complement. The general manager of Hafil in Medina, Talal Sharif, who spoke in Arabic with journalists, reiterated the commitment of his company to live up to its contractual obligation to Nakan. Pilgrims have expressed satisfaction with the transport arrangements, applauding Nakan for a job well done. There is comfort there. There is a toilet, some as a uh, cooler that you can take water from, some as only toilet, so that if you are pressed, you can just go there like plane to ease yourself. In another development, Nigerian pilgrims have started moving to Makkah from Medina after visiting Islamic historical monuments, including the Prophet Mosque. While at Zul Hulaifa, which is the Mikat or location where people entering Makkah from Medina assume Ihram and declare intent for Umrah or Hajj, Nigerian pilgrims also observe the rites related to Ihram and declared intention for Umrah. The pilgrims who are the first to land Medina are from Katsina and Lagos states. They expressed their happiness over services rendered and how excited they are for being among those hoping to witness the Hajj. I've had a lot of experience with Hajj in previous years and I must confess I was discussing with uh, some people recently and uh, the changes we have seen have come long, long before they should be with us. The changes we have seen this year should come in the next 7 to 10 years. So Alhamdulillah, I think we have had a very, very good and giant leap. The changes have been so magnificent, so incredible. I never expected to see the changes I'm seeing this time around. I'm very excited. I'm so happy. You know, it's like a dream come true. I've always wished for it. And Alhamdulillah, it's happening. So I'm very happy that I'm taking, I'm performing this year's Umrah and Aj, inshallah. As more Nigerian pilgrims are arriving in Medina, more are also expected to move to Mecca. If you are just tuning in, the program is As You Answer the Call, a public enlightenment presentation on the activities of the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, NACON. Coming up next is the segment on Hajj and Umrah education, and in this edition, we bring you the report of another success story of how NACON is living up to the expectations of Nigerian pilgrims in Medina. What then is the Hajj Commission doing to warrant this showering of praises? Stay tuned for the answers. Nigerian pilgrims have continued to arrive in Medina. They will be here for about eight days during which they will visit historical sites. Thereafter, the pilgrims will proceed to Mecca for the observance of Hajj rites. The stay of pilgrims in Medina is the responsibility of the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, Nakan. This means the commission is responsible for the provision of their accommodation as well as their medical needs, among other services. That is how it has been structured, and Nakan has consistently ensured that these services are provided without hitches. Ad hoc committees were set up by the commission to fine tune the arrangements. Members of the accommodation committee at work in Medina ahead of the arrival of pilgrims. Headed by Wali al Hajigana, the committee inspected the apartments in each of the hostels secured for the Nigerian pilgrims in Markazia area of Medina. The idea is to ensure that standards of facilities are high. And so, when the pilgrims started arriving in Medina, the job of placing them in their various apartments was made easy. 
Before settling down, the pilgrims are briefed on how to use the facilities in the hostels, particularly the electronic key cards for the doors. <laughs> <laughs> like the accommodation was good, AC, there was no problem. Uh, the medical uh, staffs were also nice. There, there was no problem at all. It exceeded our expectations. Uh, I just want to say uh, shukran to Nakon and shukran to Mr. President. So far, so good. I want to tell you that we have been enjoying what they told us. <laughs> Nakan has also ensured that pilgrims are properly fed. Meals are served twice daily, that is, breakfast and dinner, in line with the contractual agreement entered into with the service providers. This is Al Andalus Kitchen, one of the service providers contracted by Nakan to provide Nigerian pilgrims with food in Medina. They work under the supervision of Nakan officials who ensure that quality of the meals is not compromised and that the food has the Nigerian flavor. Sometimes, uh, that is, uh, Dr. Muhammad Mullah is the supervisor at Al Andalus Kitchen. He spoke on these measures as well as timely delivery of food to pilgrims. Oh, we try, we try uh, to become on time. Always we, be, uh, we try to become on time. Sometimes uh, there is uh, late, but uh, inshallah, uh, on time. We are receiving all the kinds of meats and chicken and fish and uh, vegetables. So uh, we have a special area for this. Uh, when we, re we agree to receive, we check all the quality. All the quality about the uh, expiry date also. Everything, so, uh, we check it. Nigerians residing in Saudi Arabia are among those employed by the company to specifically prepare Nigerian dishes. So we have all the cookers, all the cookers here from Nigeria, because they know uh, really the, the, the real taste of the Nigerian people. So I don't need, uh, bring another nationality to cook for Nigeria. Peter Umar is one of such Nigerians employed by Al Andalus Kitchen to prepare food. For Nigerian pilgrims. He talks about the menu. Wallahi muna tuwa da shinkafa, tuwa samin bita, da tuwa shinkafa, muna shinkafa da wake, muna musu mesunan shi miya taushe, da miya kubewa, kuma duda sa urinda ka muna wutu rufta muna aminyom. Shine muba maka abinci da gurimu, amma abinda ka ce za muyi, shi muke. Abincin bumta inji jere ba, hamu ka za abincin da suke da suke ci, amma dun muke gani anan gurin. Ba irin da can ne ba, amma dun za mu iya abinda muke iya mu yi shi. Peder also says they have a way of assessing how receptive the meals are to the pilgrims. Zamana soka waje alhazay muna tamba isu abinchi na muayi kuba yiba abba yiba mene zamu kara mene yerege mene ba yiba famu muna somu kuta abinchi mene kanda mukes gani mguayi mukes so alhazama soka yeda wana. And pilgrims have this to say about the meal. Amba mu shinkava, the naman kaza, the fruit, the ayaba, the rua. Do what the one and the agam said. The mu alhamdulillah. In kaku wana makoi in kaka mucha na na makana kuna jindaji kwa do kwa na hanu kwa do roba yana tuviana jana kwa gani magana kaka ni so alhamdulillah na kwa jana. Yenda mukata da abinchi ana ba mushi alhamdulillah higasi aba abunda da mu chese dio mugodi mukuma alhazai. Meeting the medical needs of pilgrims is taken seriously. By Nakan. Dr. Hamid Liman is the head of medical team in Medina. He gives an insight into the arrangements made for the well being of Nigerian pilgrims. Uh, in Medina, here we have the headquarters uh, based at uh, Kurban and then three first aid centers within the pilgrim accommodation. But if there is need, the National Health Commission is always willing to even open more first aid centers, even though the Saudi authorities uh, do not want many health or first aid centers proliferating within pilgrim accommodation for health issues. But nonetheless, 
uh, because that is the nearest to the pilgrims. We make sure that minor problems are taken care of within the accommodation. Anything that cannot be handled will have to come to the headquarters, which is outside the Marakazia. Nakon ensures that pilgrims don't have difficulty in locating the clinics. Every state has state officials. Uh, we walk through the uh, state uh, officials. We let them know that this is where we are located. Now, in addition to that, as soon as we confirm that there's a new set of pilgrims, we go to their hotels and place um, adequate notice to notify pilgrims about our locations. The Health Commission tries to make sure that every flight accommodates some medical staff uh, just in case of uh, emergencies that may arise during the journey. Uh, so they are always stationed. And then at the airport also, there are also medical staff in addition to other ad hoc committees that work under the National Health Commission. So within the pilgrim accommodation, as I said, that is the nearest place where pilgrims reside. And because of that, any minor issues can quickly be brought to the attention of the medical staff who will immediately intervene and that anything beyond what they can handle, they move to the nearest Saudi hospital. Expectedly, pilgrims with health challenges have started taking advantage of the clinics in Medina. I like the hospital, and the doctor that attended to me is a very friendly person. They are very, very wonderful, because in some countries, you can never see something like this. Even before you can get it, they have to they have to give, uh, tell you the amount you are going to pay for it, in which maybe you might not be able to avoid. Yes, now nah, romanticism. It don't do me for Lagos before, because that stress is too power. That things I come for Doctor Aguasa. Doctor, don't give me medicine. All in all. The well-being of Nigerian pilgrims while in Medina for the 2019 Hajj is going on without hitches. This is an obvious evidence of good and timely planning by the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, Nakan. Alhamdulillah, earlier on in the program we took an update of the 2019 airlift operations. We also saw how pilgrims are faring in Medina. From all indications, the 2019 Hajj operation is going as planned by Nakon. Up next is the Hajj talk, which focuses on the do's and don'ts of the Hajj and also touches on the rites and rituals that make the Hajj a key pillar of Islam. Tonight, Dr. Tukur Adam Al Manar discusses when and how pilgrims should use the Ihram. It is an enlightening talk. Let's hear him. <laughs> Declaring intention and assuming the state of Ihram is one of the pillars of Hajj or Umrah. Pilgrims must be in the state of Ihram before crossing a point called the Miqad. How should pilgrims make the intention? What are those acts allowed or prohibited after assuming Ihram? Being that it is haram for you to spray uh, perfume. On to Hajj Talk tonight, to... Dr. Muhammad Tukur Adam Al Manar provides answers to these and other questions. There are three categories of Hajj. We have Al Tamatu, we have Al Qiran, then Al Ifrat. So, all these categories or types of Hajj, no any intending pilgrim will start them without starting from with Al Ihram. Al Ihram is, you know, uttering the type, the intention. So it has uh, a, a, a place where those intending uh, pilgrims are expected to go and utter their intention there. Like uh, we have Al Juhufa, for example, for uh, West African, including Nigeria, is a station where they should go and utter their, you know, uh, intention. 
any intending pilgrim that did not, you know, uh, attend a haram, so his hajj is incomplete and is null and void. When declaring intention, pilgrims will be required to take ritual bath, cut their nails and hair, among others. He shaved his armpits and his private parts, cut his nails, wear his two wrappers. So he will go and pray two rakatas at that place, particular place. Then he utter. He utter the type of the pilgrimage he want to offer. He want to, you know, uh, offer. If it is tamatu, he can say, Labbaika la humma umratan mutamattian ilal hajj. Pilgrims are expected to start chanting the talbiyah after declaring intention. The talbiyah means labbaik Allahumma labbaik, labbaik la sharika laka labbaik, inna alhamda wa ni'mata laka wal mulk la sharika lak. That is talbiyah. Talbiyah means labbaik means I answer your call, O oh Allah. Labbaik la sharika lak, I answer to your call and you have no any partner. It's only you, Allah. La sharika lak, inna alhamda, all the praises, wa ni'mata and bounties, laka, they are from you. Wal mulk, all the power is for, is, is for you, Allah. So as if you are declaring that the oneness of Allah, that Allah is one and the only one who has no any partner. You are refreshing, you are refreshing your tawhid. When pilgrims are in their ihram, they are prohibited from having sexual intercourse with their spouses, hunting of animals, using scent on their body or on the white garment cutting their hair, nails, or anything on the skin, as well as engage in vulgar talks or arguments. What happens when pilgrims violate these rules intentionally or unintentionally? Allah has forgiven the, 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 the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam on all the actions they did out of forgetfulness or mistakes or under duress. So they are forgiven. But intentionally, intention, doing it intentionally is not allowed. So the penalty there is to sacrifice ram. However, pilgrims can wear wristwatches and rings. Uh, rings and uh, eyeglasses, uh, air, airpiece, uh, using an uh, umbrella during uh, sunny you know, weather. And uh, belt, you need to support the wrapper that he, 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 he put on his body. And uh, all those are, are not, uh, you know, uh, prohibited, they are allowed. Dr. Muhammad Tukur Adam advised prospective pilgrims to seek knowledge of Hajj and Umrah in order to earn themselves Hajj Mabro. Before we close the program, let's take feedback from our pilgrims who will be telling us about their experiences and also send messages to their loved ones back home. Let's hear them. We are lucky that we are directly opposite uh, Muhammad Haram. So that, that one, they really tried for us. So we don't need to uh, find Feku. To go to Mohammed Haram, just trek, just two minutes trek. We have reached uh, Mohammed Haram, so we thank them for that. Allah, you got na na chikim parinci ki da an neshwa da jin da diga na kusa dawar harami. So I go on ng ba ba karamu abum parinci ki bani. I ngato na zuri chata. I I abum bazi fadwa. Alhamdulillah, I mean I want to greet my devoted uh, lovely wife, Nurat. Yeah, but the Oredola and the Fadi Lat Aduni Oredola and my co children. That's it on the program as you answer the call. See you again same time next week for another edition of the program. Thank you for watching. <laughs> Thank you.